Mike Pacelli here, coming to you for the very first time from my brand new studio in the south of France. Uh, greetings and welcome in. Those of you that have been uh, following my hijinks <laughs> know that I moved to the south of France um, almost a year ago, and it took uh, just about that long to make my new studio, because I did it 90% uh, on my own. Uh, I had some builders put up the, uh, the drywall and the frames for the rooms. So, well, in case you're interested, um, I've got five new rooms. I've got master control, which is, you can see behind me, and uh, behind the camera there is like a lounge area. Uh, then there's, of course, a drum booth, so I could, uh, you know, record live drums. Uh, a vocal booth, and then the main tracking room, uh, side A and uh, side B. And then I've got plenty of storage room in a, uh, storage in a storage room. The, the, when you first enter the studio premise. So I'm, I'm really happy to be here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm living uh, uh, two minutes literally from the Mediterranean Sea and it's, it's, it's really great. So uh, for this lesson, uh, I'm just, you know, kind of getting the bugs out of the new studio. I thought I'd do something, uh, start a new series and I'm gonna call it um, Uncommon Chords of the Beatles. Because, uh, you know, for young cats in, the tw in their 20s, back in the early 60s, some of their songs had some, some chords that were just like, you know, unheard of in, in rock slash pop music. So I'll start with um, uh, their second studio album, With the Beatles. And uh, there's like five songs on there that have some really unusual chords that I thought I'd talk about today. Um, the first song that you hear on the record is It Won't Be Long. It was recorded on July 30th, 1963, and the first song on uh, With the Beatles that was released November 22nd, 1963, which also was the, uh, the day uh, President Kennedy got assassinated. So um, that's when the Beatles recorded It Won't Be Long. Oh, for this lesson I'm using a, uh, my Gretsch Country Classic, and it's plugged straight into a uh, 1963 Vox AC30 slash six. And uh, there's a photo of that, so you get to see what uh, how I'm getting the tone. Pretty much straight in with the middle middle position. Uh, so, you know, the song starts off, it won't be, just C sharp minor, um, to an E. Right? So they play an A chord and then they put a uh, flat nine in it. Right? Check out that chord. You might want to play it, if you play a regular A like this, you can also play this uh, add a flat nine by going. So again, either bar it like that. See that? Now I'm not gonna go through all the chords because I just wanna point out the uncommon chords. And the first one I guess is, you know, A, uh, what would you say, add flat nine, which is the, you know, uh, an A sharp or a B flat, depending on how you, what you wanna call it. So that's pretty amazing for, uh, again, 1963, you know. The next bit of brilliance in this song is, you know, um, Bob Dylan said that, that, that the Beatles had outrageous chords on this record, and, and he was so correct. Uh, the next bit is just, just pure John Lennon genius, because, you know, he was known to write melodies first and find chords later. And, uh, you know, I've talked about in many of my other lessons um, how he played banjo chords, like, you know, when he played his E like this, maybe put the pinky down. But it's all speculation what I'm about to say, but here's my uneducated uneduc guess. <laughs> that he, um, he just wrote an E to an E flat to a D to a D flat. And he sings, you know, since you, since you, yeah, since you left me. Right? That's probably what Lennon wrote. And maybe just played, you know, root and third. Since you left me. I'm so alone, now you're coming, you're coming on home. But George, being a little more, 
uh, you know, jazz curious, uh, turned it into some some even fuller chords. So the first chord would be like a, a, a regular Beatles E, you know. And then the second chord is like uh, E flat augmented. Uh, you can hear George doing that. Since you left me. Next chord would be a D sixth. And then to a, on the record you just really hear the root and the third of D flat, but it could very easily be a uh, a uh, uh, D flat seven, and and just they underplayed the seventh. But if you think about the melody, you know, that's the E, uh, E flat augmented, uh, D six. Flat seven. Since you left me, I mean, 1963, kids in their 20s coming up with a part like that. You know, he does a similar thing on "If I Fell," where he does a uh, he does a you know chromatic thing. But I mean, that's just sheer sheer brilliance for for a young cat in his 20s. Um, and the only other thing that I find interesting is at the very end, uh, I won't till I belong. They do like a kind of a, uh, you know, blues ending to you, and it's just G, G flat, F, and E major seventh. But they, but wisely they play up to the B. Then you hear the C of the F, and then you hear the E major seventh. And if you look. If you listen really closely to the record, you hear George pick up his finger and you hear the B ring out. It goes like... And, the, and then the, the B note rings out. I don't know if I can do that good here. <laughs> Great. To I belong to you. <laughs> That's great. There you have that one. The second song on With the Beatles is All I've Got to Do, recorded on September 11th, 1963. And it's, you know, almost the same kind of chord structure to some degree as the first tune, you know, uh, with the C sharp minor to E. But that first iconic chord has, uh, you know, just perhaps confused a lot of us for many years, and it sounds like this. Isn't that beautiful? Um, if you're going to name it, you can call it an E augmented add 9 add 11. Now my guess is, um, you know, John knew a, 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 a augmented chord because so many of the old, you know, doo-wop songs and everything use that chord in, in a turnaround. Like if something was an A, you know, it was A, the song would go. You've all heard that that chord, and and John knew it, and and I think he was looking for a you know a cool first chord for this song, and he probably put his hands down. Oh, that sounds nice. What can I do? Let me drop me pinky. And he dropped his pinky right there on the uh, seventh fret of the B string. Oh, that's it then, huh? Whenever. It's just a fun chord to play, right? So again, just play your uh, normal E augmented, and then put your pinky down on the seventh fret of the B string, and your fingers already laying there across the fifth fret, and get that A on the top. So you got augmented, you're adding a nine, and you're adding an eleven. You play the uh, seventh fret of the fifth string first, and you're on your way. You just want to do it more, don't you? <laughs> uh, the only other place I, I'd say is kind of, uh, you know, uncommon would be... Uh, call on me. The rhythm is just playing a regular E, and you hear George making a sixth chord. 
just gonna call on me. So it's hard to know. I think it's George doing it actually, because because John adapted that make an E chord and an A chord sixth all the time. But you know, take a regular E chord like this, and then put your pinky down the second uh, fret of the B string. So one, one one of the Beatles is going regular E, and the other plays a sixth chord. Playfully, you know. And those are the two, I'd say, uncommon chords of that tune. The third song on With the Beatles that has a couple of uncommon chords is All My Loving. Now, uh, I've done a, a complete analysis of John Lennon's amazing triplet part, you know, uh, on my lesson called The Genius of John Lennon, if, if you want to check it out where he does the, you know. That thing. But the uncommon chord, those are pretty, you know, basic chords. Um, the uncommon chord is the uh, uh, C sharp minor major that goes in, when he goes, All my loving, this chord, I will send. Right? See it there? So from uh, uh, fifth string, it's, uh, 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 yeah, fifth string, four, six, five, five, four. All my loving. <laughs> I couldn't resist playing uh, George's Nashville style solo. Uh, if you'd like to see a breakdown of that, I, I did a lesson called The Genius of, of George Harrison, and, and I go through that, that solo. Um, but that D flat minor major, again, you know, it's, it's a common move in jazz, you know. Something like that. Actually, you know, it would be the Stairway to Heaven move, too, if you take it to A minor. Alright, say. That could be a, a A minor major at nine. But again, in all my loving, I will send to you all my darling, I'll be true. Fun facts to know and tell, this is the first song that Paul wrote the words first and then the music later. Um, there's also something notable that George does in songs like this where he, instead of a, like a minor, instead of the F sharp minor, uh, on the record he plays the straight, you know, kind of just regular chord, you know, like that. But on live when you see him, like, see, Remember I'll always instead of George playing going down to there. Remember I'll, I'll he plays a uh, an inversion of F sharp minor, like uh, remember I'll always. So that's just a, an F sharp minor, but interesting to note that George does that a lot on on minor chords, where John goes. Yeah. And George is going. See that one? F sharp minor. So, two uncommon chords in that one. And for 1963, that's the bomb. The next song that's uh, noteworthy with some unusual chording, I think, is uh, George Harrison's first uh, song that he got on a record, uh, Don't Bother Me. Uh, it was recorded on uh, September 12, 1963. And uh, there's a couple really uh, unusual techniques that end up being kind of part of the Beatles' vocabulary later on in songs like um, like Norwegian Wood. But uh, on the D chord, plays a straight D chord, but he moves down. The melody goes to E minor. And the way George does is very cool, you know. Right? D. Same kind of idea, but George is doing it back in uh, you know September 12th, and uh, again just just take your take a take a D chord, 
Put your pinky on the fourth fret of the uh, fourth string. First finger, pick it up and put it on the second fret of the fourth string, and then lift it up. So. Uh, fun to do and uh, you know mess around with it maybe write your own song uh, the other noteworthy kind of cool chordal thing that he did first time uh, they did something like this on a record was you know the chords are basically uh, B minor G I'm sorry A G to E but he, he he's thinking about the sixth fifth and fourth string and then he's moving around with his pinky like and he's getting these notes like He does it a little different every time, but he's playing full chords and making that, that, that motion happen like. So, but playing the full chords like. I've got no. And very cool to do. So there's so many variations that you could use you know, uh, on your own music when you're, when you're thinking about something like that. Because, you know, back before that, and uh, maybe George came up with it because it seemed like every song, if you were like playing a B kind of, you know, thick uh, fifths, everybody was going. Right? So, you know, making it a seventh chord, really. Very Beatle sounding, right? You know, so many songs end up being like that. But and another fun fact to know and tell after that recording session well a few days uh, after September 12th uh, George was the first Beatle to go to America he went to Benton, Illinois to visit his, uh, his sister Louise sat in with a band when he was there and uh, again first Beatle to come to America a couple days after the uh, Don't Bother Me session so there you have it The last song to uh, have some uncommon chords on with the Beatles, uh, I'd say, is uh, Till There Was You, which is not an original composition, but the, but the lads did a great interpretation of it. Um, the chords are F to F sharp, diminish, uh, G minor to C, C9 at the beginning. And, but the way they're voicing the uh, F sharp diminish is like, you know, like this, like a three note chord. Beautiful to the G minor to the C9, and maybe the C9 was a little uncommon too back there. But I think the F sharp diminishes the chord that sticks out to be uncommon for you know 1963. Because if you knew a diminished chord back then, you played it like this, right? That form that moves up in minor thirds, right? Uh, from four to one would be. First fret, second fret, first fret, second fret. But they're the Beatles are playing it. You know, going. Yeah. So it's a great way to play a diminished chord. You can still move it up in minor thirds. You know, simpler, simpler. Uh, simpler version of it. Um, then, then they have the uh, in sweet, you know, once again the G minor major. G minor major. Sweet. And then they go to a G7. Because that, that, that move really sounds like it should go to G minor. In sweet. George again plays it like a three note chord from uh, four to two, third fret, fourth fret, sixth fret. There's a C9, and then there's a uh, G sharp augmented. Right, you hear that? C There's the uh, 
G sharp augmented uh, from four to one uh, fret six five five four. That's a chord you can move in in uh, five frets. And you get the same notes. And then uh, in the solo, I mean, the solo is so beautiful. If you'd like a complete uh, breakdown of the solo, I do it in the, uh, my lesson, The Genius of George Harrison. Uh, the solo has some great chords, and the solo goes on, let's see. Um. cool things in there is on the G minor, uh, he bars the third fret and then he hammers on the fifth fret of the third and the first string. Slides up to that B flat minor. Plays in uh, F6. And then those inversions, those minor versions I was telling you about, like an A minor to A flat minor to G minor. And then such a luscious chord, an F sharp, seventh, raise nine. <laughs> right? Before the F. So uh, that chord is from um, six to one would be fret two, four, a muting that note, uh, three on the third string, five, five. I guess you, you can get that note if you want it. It's a little heavy with two sevenths, so I like to mute that chord to the F. So beautiful, so beautiful. And the only other uh, interesting and uncommon things are at the very end. Well, first of all, the way they do till they go, they go uh, C D E till C E C. <laughs> Very uncommon. That was you. And then he's playing an F like this. Um, I forget the exact rhythm, but it's like. To a D flat at nine, so that's just basically an F chord there. From four to one, ten, 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 thirteen, and pick up the pinky. Then play like a D flat, uh, you know, normal D flat bar chord on four strings, and add your pinky. Major seventh. <laughs> so nice. Should have played this on a nylon string, but I'm, I'm just comfy here in the studio talking to you. Oh, that last uh, F major seventh. You can also play it like this, you know. Um, I, I, I like this version of it, this voicing of it. Don't get the open E, but it's still nice. All right. So from uh, fifth to fourth string, you got fret eight, eight, seven, nine. Nice version of that. Nice voicing. That was you. Kind of different. So there you go. I uh, hope you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, I'm going to be doing probably six or seven complete Beatle tunes. I think I got She Loves You and You Can't Do That. Before I moved to France, uh, I had uh, Richie Russo, my, my, my favorite drummer, one of my favorite drummers, do some Beatle tracks. So I already got the drum tracks done and I'll, I'll be working on getting those complete songs. So stay tuned. Um, I appreciate you hanging out with me. If you'd like to drop me a note, do so at MikePacelli.com. Always cool to hear from you and I answer every email. So until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli and thanks for hanging out with me.